break your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I can see in your eyes Your head is full of dreams Tears are a proof of failure You just gotta let Hi, uh, so I am a rising senior at Bard, so I have one more year, which means kind of one more video showing what the living situation at Bard is like, or I, this year I'm actually going to be living off campus, um, but this was my last year living on campus, and I kind of wanted to, again, show what a typical dorm looked like, as well as just what kind of life is like during the year and although it's kind of in bits and pieces it was not really a coherent um <laughs> video i still just kind of wanted to give the vibe as to what it was like junior year so this is a very important thing that i want to talk about which is specifically living in oberholzer this year was incredibly difficult for a lot of reasons I wanted to make a very honest video showing like obviously what this space actually looks like, what it, what they offer to you. I didn't, I didn't take any videos of the common room or the kitchen. Very large common space. I'll try to find one on a picture online. If I can't, I can't. There's a very large common space with just kind of a standard kind of kitchen style. So you have just oven, stove top fridge that's kind of gross, uh, just typical college kitchen experience. There are some very important things to know about living in Overholzer, so I'm going to say the pros and I'm going to say the cons. Pros. Very large dorm rooms, probably the largest you're going to find on campus, even I want to say bigger than Senior Select. There is obviously no bathrooms in these individual rooms, but the actual rooms themselves are very large and accommodate a lot of stuff. I was able to have a little kitchenette that I made for myself with a tea kettle, and uh, you can see in the video, I, I, I set it up very nicely for myself. It felt very homey. A uh, beautiful view because part of it overlooks this grassy kind of area near the tree houses and uh, Sawk Hill Coffee House with blossom trees during the spring and just a really cute view that I enjoyed. Another pro is that Oberholzer is very close to the gym and in a relatively central location on campus, you know, you can walk easily to the Fisher Center, walk easily to the gym, easily to Klein. You're near a shuttle stop if you feel like you're still too far away. I personally enjoyed walking. Um, when I was going to the gym or when I was walking to classes. Now it is a little bit far from Olin, which is one of the kind of hubs for classes on campus, but I didn't, that didn't really bother me that much. There's a single bathroom, so you're not gonna be in this communal shower or communal toilet area. It's each individual bathrooms and there's a lot of them. On the con side of things, also bathrooms. The bathrooms are kind of gross, as in any college dorm, I feel like that's gonna be true. That would be my complaint with any of the buildings on campus, but definitely the fact that the bathrooms are very college-y and it's, um, at least when I was living there, is a co-ed living space, so it was just kind of messy and dirty, but that's honestly any college bathroom, so yeah. My second con of living in Oberholzer was the fact that there were only two washer dryers in the entire building. And again, I don't exactly know the number of students living there. It was a decent amount where it felt like the Hunger Games trying to get to the laundry and people would take your stuff out even if it was in the middle of a cycle. That happened to me probably twice, even though I set timers. 
But on doing laundry in college is ruthless. Third con was that it was a very loud building. And I don't just mean people going about their everyday lives. And it definitely was for me because I was an upperclassman living in a building of mostly freshmen. So it was loud in that sense. There were a lot of freshmen, but my real issue was the fact that this is an old building. So the acoustics left to right on either side of me, I couldn't hear a thing. It was complete silence, no matter how loud they played their music, like next to me. Above and below, I could hear every noise. I could hear a pencil drop. I could hear every footstep above me. I could hear every bit of music below me, any bit of talking. So it was very, very difficult during the year to get sleep sometimes because people would get back late and it was just a loud living space in general and that was kind of the fault of the building itself being very thin in the ceiling and the floors i don't know it's an old building my next con is probably the most important con and that is there is a moisture problem in the building and this might be something that they have resolved since I lived there. And again, this was, I lived there a couple months ago. It was something that students complained about, especially living in the basement. There was a lot of moisture build up down there. And then that transferred onto the second floor and then was probably the least, least of a concern on the third floor. Um, there was mold. There were issues with mold in the building. Students took pictures of it. I have pictures of this. I have email correspondences of my building kind of talking to Bard and Res Life and, and Environmental Services, very angry about the fact that there was mold. Bard did eventually come and clean it up, but definitely it was an issue. Even going forward, some students had to leave and move out of the building because of lung issues and not like having trouble breathing. Some students like myself had to get air purifiers because it was just, it was a concern. The mold issue in the building was a concern. Something that if you are planning on living there or if you do live there, get in touch with Res Life, get in touch with environmental services and see if it's still an issue and just go in with an open mind if you're going to be living here, that that is something that was an issue in the past, whether or not it's an issue in the future, I don't know, but it was a concern. Three of my videos, I, I didn't do this in my first two videos because I don't know, I just, I didn't. I would probably give Born my freshman year dorm, which is a toaster, a solid seven out of 10, probably an eight out of 10 at this point looking back because A, it was a freshman living space and that was really good for freshmen, even though the room itself was small, the building was sound. There weren't a lot of issues with noise there weren't a lot of issues with the actual cleanliness of the building itself and it was a great experience living there small kind of community vibes because it was a toaster and there weren't a lot of students living there so everybody kind of knew each other my sophomore year suite was a 10 out of 10. that was the best living situation i've ever had it was amazing if you can get a suite get a suite because that was amazing you are only sharing a space with people that you know if i could go back i would live in a suite like every year which i don't think that's even possible but i would live in a suite given the opportunity that's where i would live junior year i give oberholzer a solid four out of ten and pretty much the points awarded to it are from the size of the rooms and that's that's the in the view those are the two things that it has going for it and it's close to Sock Hill Coffee House. You could say that. I don't know. It was the least good experience I had living at Bard so far. Okay, I hope this video was informative and that you enjoyed it. And if you're coming to Bard, welcome. If you're thinking about coming to Bard, please ask me any questions in the comments. I love answering questions. Honestly, I should probably be a tour guide at Bard because I love talking to freshmen and people who are curious about it because I like to give my honest opinions on things. So please reach out to me if you have any questions. Bye.